thing I remember most about Mark is his, his smile. Uh, he had a great smile. And he smiled about everything, even if he disagreed with you, which wasn't too often. He was a very agreeable guy, a great guy, a man with uh, great ideas, innovative ideas. I've only known Mark Agnini for a short time, but in that time, he left a huge impact on my life. Not just with the Libertarian Party and the projects that we would do, but with everything that I was tackling in life. Not just his humor, but his positivity. He would always bring a jovial sense of happiness to everything, whether it was one person, him and I meeting together for breakfast to go over scheduling, or with a group of people. Mark was an amazing man. I will forever miss his insightful observations his delightful acerbic wit and his uh, always upbeat, uh, good, good, good form, good will, uh, good cheer. He always had a smile on his face, always. He was be, uh, above and beyond and, and more than anything else, he was a teacher. Mark had a passion for life, he had a passion for the world, its people, everything that was in it, adventures. And I think in the end, probably his life's goal was to make the world a better place for everyone. Those of us who were fortunate enough to know him will forever miss him. I feel so lucky to have spent the time that I did with Mark. I had no idea that it was going to be as brief as it was. The, I guess the one thing that I, I learned the most about from him was that uh, being a professor of philosophy and theology, that he really drew me more into the research I was doing and found that not the differences, but the similarities between theological law and civil law. I could talk to him about Aristotle and what Aristotle meant to Aquinas and the Summa Theologica. How many people can you find that, that you could do that with? I, I had the pleasure of, of first meeting Mark Agnini at the 2009 Students for Liberty Conference at the University of Chicago when my sister and I and my nieces were, uh, we had the booth for the Libertarian Party of Illinois there. And in his typical manner, he, you know, he challenged me and I know, I don't remember the details, but it was something about theology, not my subject, but it was his. And, but it was done in a very friendly way and, and instantly I, I just, I warmed up to the guy and he was friendly, he was, um, but he was obviously very intelligent and very clever. Mark was the kind of guy that would sit down with a complete stranger, a man that he had never met before, and have an hour-long conversation with him, trying to get him to change his mind on something that was important to him. But for Mark, he was thrilled. It was a challenge, and he never got angry when he was having a debate with someone about an issue that he disagreed with. He was happy, he would ask questions, and he would try to turn it around on that person. And I looked at him afterwards and I said, Mark, that was brilliant how you did that with Tim. You just kind of had him standing there. You were really working with him on that, the way you were asking questions. And he goes, well, that's the Socratic method. I've known Mark for quite a few years, and he's definitely someone that had a huge influence on me. Um, one of the things I remember about Mark is no matter where we were at, he always had something witty to say. He could cheer up anyone in the, you know, the worst of moods. And the one thing that he said to me one time that meant the most to me is when I was considering dropping out everything, and Mark said, you can't, you're one of the indispensables. And from that moment on, I knew that Mark and I would be good buddies. Mark was one of those guys that didn't have an enemy in the world. He made friends everywhere he went. Even if you disagreed with him politically, he could still sit there and debate you civilly and friendly to the end. Every meeting where he walked through the door was an extra special treat when he'd come in and he'd and say, oh, hello, Jenny Poo, every time and give me the great big hug. And, and that's what I'll miss the most is that he won't be there. He won't see the things that we'll do. He won't see 
the successes that we have because he was the guy that motivated us to do more, to be more, to be involved more. I also met Mark in 2009 with Julie and my, um, my children. Um, I didn't spend so much time discussing theology and all those things with him as much as he was just a super kind person to me almost like a dad figure. Um, he knew my situation with my health and every single time he saw me, every single time we went to a meeting, the very first thing out of his mouth was, Kathleen, how are you doing? And he got a great big huge bear hug. And I miss that so much. <laughs> he was so kind and sweet to me and my children. After he asked about me, he always asked how my kids were, how my grandsons were. That's all, you know, he was super sweet to me, and I did learn a lot from him, a whole lot. I'm not even going to go into all that, because I really want to say from the heart, he was just one of the sweetest, kindest, most loving people I've ever known, and it's kind of sad to go to meetings now, and I miss that big bear hug, and I also like to add that his kindness was so abundant that he said to me, anytime that Sam and Seth want to get married, I will fly to Portland on my own time and marry those two because I love those kids. So I just love the guy a lot and I miss him. Come on. Hi, honey. All right, hold on a second. Everybody say hi, honey. Hi, honey. We're at the convention. <laughs> Yeah, I just, just, just wanted to tell you the things. We were on a break at the time, but now we're back in session. So, everybody say bye, honey. Bye, bye honey. honey. I'll be home around midnight. <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right. I sometimes don't think I know what to say about Mark uh, at any time. Um, he's always been uh, a real inspiration to all of us, a libertarian inspiration. One time when we were out somewhere lonely and down or well, western part of the state, uh, a renewable energy fair. And uh, the thing he had such a positive attitude that whole day when there were so few people coming by. And at the end of the day, I find he says, oh yeah, I've been sporting this terrible headache all day. And I was like, well, then you can go. I, I'll take care of it, no problem. But I wouldn't have known it with his attitude. He was just always positive, always <laughs> willing to talk to people. He was also great at the booth. Wow, he could be standing there when someone comes along and because of that wonderful baritone-like voice of his, he could, he could draw people in. He was also one of the most active people in recent years that I've seen in the Libertarian Party of Illinois. That he regularly went to Fox Valley meetings, regularly went to DuPage meetings. He helped revive the Lake County Libertarian Party. And at the time of his death, he was working on reviving the DeKalb County Party. So one of those very rare individuals in our party who was involved in so many different levels and trying to help out with all these different chapters. Uh, truly a rarity. I met Mark uh, when he started coming to the, to the DuPage County uh, meetings and he was such a wonderful presence. He'd walk in the, into a room and just everybody felt so much better about being a libertarian being around Mark. He was always ready with a joke. He was always ready with a smile, with a hug. Sometimes the jokes weren't always appropriate, but that's what made it even better. During my race for College of DuPage trustee, he was my number one supporter. He was behind me 100%. At the end of that race, he gave me a book um, that sits up on, my, up on my bookshelf, and I treasure that. And just, he was so generous and so kind.
a person who has given outstanding local service. Uh, not saying that this person has not helped the state party, or he has, but he also uh, has been very integral in helping out local chapters. And in this case, uh, the person I'm referring to, I didn't even know what chapter he belonged to because I would see him in uh, Fox Valley, I would see him in DuPage, and <laughs> I would see him in Chicago. I even saw him in Springfield. So uh, I want to give the Jim Walden Award for Outstanding Local Service to Mark Agnini. inspiration to me. Um, I love him. I know that the world is a better place because he was here on earth and I wish him well. Mark will be will be missed tremendously. Uh, wow. He was, he was just, a, just a great guy. I really miss him. Not just to be positive and happy yourself, but when you can instill that in somebody else, just with your words, with your actions, with your smile, that's an amazing thing. And Mark did that so brilliantly and so masterfully. I don't know if I'm ever going to come across another human being that could do that. And I am greatly going to miss Mark. Mark was a guy that I had the utmost respect for. And he respected me in turn. And that meant so much to me. Uh, he, he was taken from us way too soon, way too soon. And, and I guess in the end, I could just say, rest in peace, hopefully he rests in peace, knowing that he will never be forgotten. Marching in, when the saints come marching in. 